bear in mind because the thing is people when people consider religion they see in the positive light which you know i can understand why you're praying you're praying for good like christianity you know it's known for we're good people we we want the best but when you're praying against your enemies and you're you know my enemies die my enemies die you're using the same energy to fuel up your intention i don't see that any differently than if a witch went ahead and put a couple of spells together and you know you had the same intention you know it's one energy is feared and the other one isn't but it's the same energy when you stop having this one dimensional thinking you start to become a true alchemist alchemy there is no concept of this is one thing and this one thing the plus and the negative those energies are one even when you think about things like electricity you need that positive charge and you need the negative charge that creates one energy within itself you can't just have the positive it's not possible it's not possible nothing is ever just one within itself energy within itself has to have a negative charge if you've studied chemistry you studied physics you guys know what i'm talking about an iron positively charged negatively charged it's one energy within itself there the 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 reason why one is positive and one is the other one's negative is because they reflect each other but it's really the same energy at play so what makes something positive or what makes another thing negative is the reflection of those two energies together okay exactly and when i say things like there is no i have a video that says there is no such thing as good or evil i think i have a, i made that video over a year now and when i made that video people were like you know you know of course there are bad things there are evil things but when i say there's no concept of good or bad i mean in the in terms of energy in terms of the universe or god whatever you believe in because holistically guys things it's just what is we humans give interpretation to these things we we judge for obvious legal reasons for moral reasons for whatever reasons we outside human judgment what is bad and what is good what makes something ugly and what doesn't make something ugly we create this and obviously i'm not saying that it's wrong that we create this of course we need this we need some sort of system in place but holistically guys as in if you zoom out if you look at something like very closely with that magnifying glass of course there's always going to be good bad you're always going to kind of separate things but when you zoom out zoom 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 all the way out there is just one energy and that energy is the same and opposite poles of that energy is what you consider good or bad so the universe or this energy or whatever is out there doesn't think hmm that's bad or that's good it gives rise to both because that thing is just energy within itself. We give it meaning. We give these things meaning. But outside of human judgment, there is no separation. Exactly. Judgment is what causes separation. And obviously, we humans, we like to give meaning to things. We like to, you know, have understandings of things, create some sort of system in place. But when you zoom out, you know, that's just what it is energies the thing and the one i was actually talking to my friend the other day about this um i was telling him that all that exists is intention hey bob how you doing all that exists is intention so for example there is no outside outside force per se that is going to say well this is evil or this is wrong so i'm not going to give rise to that no Everything is intention, whether it's good or bad, is going to be give is going to manifest. It's going to manifest. Even when it comes to children, guys, literally, I always believe that children are seeds. They carry intention. So whatever your parents were thinking about when they were giving rise to you, the energy they had within themselves, their environment, that gives rise to who you are. So most people think, well, um, I'm not affected by things that, you know, my parents i mean i'm not affected by what happened before i was born but you were the energy you hold you guys know about junk dna and this is what i'm saying spirituality is very rooted in science within itself you guys know that when you're in your when you're in your mother's womb in fact you were in your grandmother's womb 
because when your grandmother was alive she had the egg that had your mom and that egg in itself had you so as your grandmother three generations behind actually you were literally there and her experiences affect you even before you're born and another thing is when you're in your mother's stomach her environment affects you so as you're a baby as you're a fetus in her stomach her experiences what she goes through so what was your mom going through when you were young when you were not even young you when you were a bunch of cells i guess <laughs> in her stomach those things is energy it's intention so she gave birth to that intention she gave birth to you holding that energy holding energy of ancestors behind and as you go through life different things trigger different energies of the past so when spiritual uh you know spiritual people talk about things like ancestry and everything it's not just like who faith things this is energy within itself guys so when you um as you live life different things will make you more susceptible to you know some people even have fears that they don't know why they have those fears like i don't know why i'm scared of this or some people are more predisposed to a few things and they don't know why you're a manifestation of energy and this is not just as in giving birth obviously i'm giving that example but that's not just it doesn't just apply to that it applies to everything everything is energy and we give birth to it we manifest it whether we know it or not and that energy is not gonna think well it's so evil i'm not gonna do this as long as that energy is viable is the universe is always going to create it it's not it doesn't matter if it's going to is evil or good we give rise to it because this thing is almost i like to think about it as this is um an equal playing field there is no sense the universe has no sense of morality like we do we obviously morality is even flex like flexible like what was moral flipping 10 years ago or a hundred years ago 400 years ago isn't what's moral today so morality changes with time but it changes with us we create that but the universe has no sense of morality in a sense that everybody is equal and the 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 laws of the universe apply to everybody in totality it does they do not discriminate and it's like you're given this energy there is this rules here there is this power here and you create what you want whether you know what you're creating, whether you don't know what you're creating, whether you have an idea, it does not matter. You're giving rise. For as long as you're alive and generations to come after you, you're always going to be creating. Giving rise to intentions all the time. All the time. Whether you know it or not. And whether those intentions are evil or good, it doesn't matter. It gives rise to it. It's viable. Remember, the universe has no sense of morality. Whether, Oh, let's stop this because, you know, it's not good. No, that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Well, if you're, um, you could be, you could be, I guess, the most nicest person. But if you don't understand the laws of the universe, you're going to go through hell on earth. Literally, guys. It, there's no sense of, obviously, people say things like, do good and good will come back to you. That is simplistic. That's not always the case. If that's the case, everybody that will be so noble and so, um, you know, empathetic will be at the top. But in fact, it's the selfish people at the top, if you see. How does that work, right? So when you are taught things like good things come to you or um, a few things people say to make themselves feel better, that's not the case. It's almost like going, and I've, I gave this example. If you're in my live two weeks ago you understand this because I, I explained it on my previous life as well it's like going to school so you go to school let's say high school and obviously i don't know about other countries but obviously i'm in the uk so in year 11 which is the last year before you go into college those are the results that determine whether you make it or not so you could have literally been a good student throughout the five years but if you mess up your GCSEs, which are like the exams you take, you're not going through. You could have studied the whole night. But if on the day 
of your exam, you woke up late or something happened to mess that up, the, uni- the, the you know, I guess the examiner or the person that's marking your exam is going to think, hmm, well, let me be more lenient. It, I would like you to think about that institution, the school institution, as the universe. There's someone who could even have missed school, skipped lessons, didn't show up to school. And that person could have cheered on the day of exam. And they passed and they got through. It's not, it's, they cheated the system, but the universe is going to think, well, hmm, they did what they had to do to get to where they need to go. And I'm not saying that's right or what's wrong. The examiner, if the examiner doesn't know that, they're going through. They're, they're moving on to, I guess, the college or the sixth one they need to go to. So think about the universe as some sort of institution, whether there are laws in place. And if you can cheat the system to get to where you want to go, it's still allowed. If you're, um, it could be, I guess, goody two shoes. But if, I guess, you're naive to the fact, to what's going on, or you still can't go. You can't be like, well, but I spend my time doing this and doing that and doing that. But if you didn't understand the laws in place, ignorance is no defense in the court of law, <laughs> right? Ignorance is no defense in the court of law. Like, if a baby wants to jump off a cliff, they're still going to face gravity. They're still going to... The universe is not going to think, hmm, they're a baby. Let's... I guess, defy the laws of gravity and pick the baby up because they're a baby. They don't know. They're naive, right? If I went and jumped off the cliff, I'm going to fall. But obviously, I know that, so I'm not going to do that. So that's the thing with these laws in place. You either know them or you don't. And obviously, some of them we do know, but they are more complicated. The people, the elites, or whatever you want to call them, they understand this. This is why they can get away with being evil or they can get away with specific things because they know how to manipulate these laws you can't change them but you can manipulate them you can move your way around them and so i say this to say that you have to equip yourself with knowledge because otherwise life like the things that you're taught growing up i don't want to say they are wrong because definitely there is truth to them i can't say they are completely wrong but they're simplistic, as in, it's not black and white, as they, you know, they make it seem. Like, oh, okay, do this and that, okay, this and that. One plus two equals four. Very simplistic. And then people go through life very unaware of their energy. They go through life very much. And that's what they want, because when you're unaware of your power, I can control you. And I don't even mean to sound like a conspiracist, but it doesn't take, you know, Albert Einstein to tell you that you need to keep a population in a certain level of dormancy or you have to have them almost docile, something, so then it's easy. Imagine if everybody, I guess, was smart enough to do certain things, they were aware of certain things. It would be chaotic because no one wants to do specific things. Everybody's aware. So not everybody knows these things. Occult, um, Occultists know this. But then they teach you that it's wrong, though. So then you even stray away from even going into that rabbit hole. So you don't read books. You don't arm yourself with that information. You just stay away because it's wrong. Your mom taught you that. And her mom taught her that. And generations to come. But what it is, at least what I'm finding out for myself, is what people really fear is their own power. Because there is no... The things people have been taught, guys... And I'm having to unlearn. So I'm not saying I know everything. But what I, I... I kid you not. Every time I get something... Thank you guys so much for the gifts. Every single time I learn things, I'm just like, wow, we really, we've really been deceived. <laughs> really been deceived. And deceived in a way that is so good, it's very hard to awaken people. Like, unless you by yourself decide you want to be awakened, no one can do it for you. No one can do it for you. It's almost like when you decide to leave religion, you would have all these people tell you, you're going to hell. or It's almost like they've made this... They've put people in such a good spell that the people that try to wake up are gaslit into coming back into the spell. Right? 
it's like they have they pull one string it's one string they don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again no one string and they make sure that once they pull that one string from one person or one population those people go ahead and pull the rest of other people's strings it's like a domino effect i you know kick one down and then they kick the rest down for them they don't have to do nothing anymore and then just watch the population just argue so when i see muslims and christians argue about who is right and who's wrong i'm just like you guys like they make it seem like there is options there and there isn't or even in, in you know cases of spirituality they make it now like it's a religion and then it makes it seem like well you're living one box to come into this free spirited place but then they make it like a religion now and now you're literally living one box and two to go into another you know so it's, it's it, they're very smart they're very smart and the best thing you can do for yourself is to unlearn i would even question start there start there question and many people say well what's the point of questioning you know like what's the point what am i gonna do but the best thing you can do is for yourself you can't obviously tell your family because like i said you can't awaken every single person you have to do it for yourself and hopefully they catch up at some point but you have to do it for yourself once you do it for yourself you can know how to manipulate energy and for me that's why i'm doing it because people are like, well, what's the point? We're still under this matrix and what am I going to do? We're still being fed all this food. And it's just like, well, I can manipulate. I use the laws where it's practical. I can improve my life. I can improve my emotional well-being, my mental health. I can teach people. You know, that's, you know, that's the part where I'm like, you guys, you know. um, Yeah. And one thing I've realized, energy is so real, guys. And as someone who had, who was the most, I guess, skeptical person as it pertains to energy, like you know, like what's this? It's so real, guys. It scares me sometimes. It scares me sometimes. Um, but yeah, let me read some comments. I was talking for too much, for too long. Um, someone says it's easier to deceive than convince someone they're deceived. Oh my God, that is, that, that's such a word. That's such a word. It's easier to deceive than to convince someone they are deceived. Oh, a word. Someone said, you once said the world is triangle. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> Oh my god, someone asked me. I think you asked um <laughs> No, it's so funny. Someone asked me what sh- what shape was the earth. And I must have said a triangle because I was trying to be funny. And then someone said <laughs> I was I was playing. I was playing. Um don't don't take me too seriously. I obviously I was playing. <laughs> That's actually funny. Um Someone asked, what shape is the the world, like, the earth? Is it flat? Is it a firmament? Is it this? Is it that? And I must say, you know what? It's a a triangle. Let's, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, But I was playing, guys. Don't, I can't justify that one. (laughs) Um, Okay. Someone says, how can I wake up now? Sometimes I feel awake and sometimes I feel lost. Okay, this is what I recommend. Don't try to kind of indulge yourself in so much, like into so much of like conspiracy theories. I mean, you can, but I know it led me to get to this place of just feeling like, what's the point? I like to learn about the laws of the universe. Start with the Kabbalion. It's a good book. Start with specific things books i have some good books on my instagram have a look guys i keep updating them um on my instagram highlights learn things that you can apply in place the reason why people feel lost is because like where do i even start from start from looking at the patterns of your life start from healing and i know people are like oh healing da, da, da. i hear this all the time but guys to understand your energy or to even transmute your energy there has to be a certain awareness of your own patterns you can't try to manipulate energy when you have energy your energy being stuck in specific timelines if for example something happened to you at a specific age and you never healed from that it's very hard 
And that's the thing. Many people want to do things like manifestation. And the first lesson I teach my clients is healing. And I'm not just trying to say that because I'm I'm annoying. I genuinely want you guys. And healing looks like self-awareness, key. Healing looks like understanding your patterns, which is, again, part of self-awareness. Healing looks like understanding where is my energy stack at. Because healing, to heal something, is always going to be in the past, right? So something happened down the line, your mom, your dad, your ex, your best friend, something happened to you and your energy was physically stuck there. You know, when people say things like, um, what do they say? They say things like trauma stops, you know, stalls your growth or keeps you stuck at the time in which it happened. Yes, that's what they mean. Cause your energy is literally stuck at a specific timeline. So it's very hard to understand alchemy if you're someone that struggles with basic self-worth. Because for you to be, to even manifest, you have to believe you're worthy. Most of you guys don't even have that. Some of you guys maybe struggle with feeling powerful. And guys, having, feeling, knowing that you're powerful, 10 times faster your manifestations. 10 times faster. And I can't make you feel powerful. Nothing can. You have to know that knowledge. And for you to try, because people are like, okay, how do I feel powerful? How do I feel powerful? It's like... What makes you feel unpowerful? Let's start there. Let's start there. What could you do? What have you done? What makes you feel helpless? How can you transmute that energy? How can you channel? I always tell my clients, maybe I'm giving away too much of my secrets. Because these are the things I say for my clients. There is only one skill you need to learn in life. And once you've mastered that skill, you got it. Like you're good to go. It's almost as everybody kind of tries to start from the ground up to build something from the and you can do that, but that's gonna take you time. Who wants to waste time when I can who wants to drive two hours away when I can take the shortcut and get there in five minutes, right? So of course, majority of people take the long route because you know they don't know it's what's told. I don't know. But then when you understand that there is a short shortcut to not necessarily to getting not necessarily getting what you want but becoming the version of you that has that thing that's what it is that's what it is it makes it easier there was just one skill you need to learn one skill one skill and i want to teach this in my class so bad guys oh my god i have so much to say i have so much to say yeah someone says how to answer that question, how can I wake up now? Sometimes I feel awake and sometimes I feel lost. I feel like it's understanding that there is no point. And this is for everybody that is further down in their spiritual journey. There is not going to be a point in your life where you feel like you've got it together. I feel lost to this day. And I've been on my journey for a minute. I feel lost. Sometimes. But that's because you understand the law of rhythm. Ooh. I spoke about the, uh, the law of rhythm in my previous live, which is on YouTube. You guys catch it there. It's understanding that where energy goes one way, it will, it's going to now go on the opposite way. It swings left, right, up, down. As above, so below. As within, so without. Understanding that energy moves from one place to another. This is why it's not possible. It's, it's, it's not even physically. It's just energetically impossible to capture or to hold energy hostage in one state. This is why people feel different emotions. This is why we have different seasons. Because the seasons outside mirror the ones we have inside. This is why it's physically impossible to be happy all the time. You could be happy today and you'll be miserable the next day. Because energy moves. It's like a pendulum. If it swings one way, it's going to swing the other. The one constant thing is change. So it's understanding that whilst you can't change that, you can't change the fact that energy moves and that's literally what's constant. That's what's guaranteed is change. I know I'm happy today, but I might not be this happy next week. I might even have this. The thing about this is understanding that you could have everything. Everything today, have the same thing next week and be miserable with the ex- nothing's changed you have the exact same thing and it's understanding that's just how energy works it can't be in one place for a long time energy moves it's rhythm the law of rhythm you guys if you haven't checked out my previous live you guys do that or just go educate yourself on on the internet have a few articles read there but that's just what it is so you can't store energy in one place so one time i'm going to feel great i'm going to feel awake Next week, I might potentially feel lost, but I'm not going to 
you know make myself feel sad as a result it's understanding oh this is just slow in place this is just what's happening but now that i'm aware of that information i can't change it but i'm aware of it i can try to manipulate specific things i can do specific things to ensure that once i leave that energy once that energy now transmutes and comes from this state to that state there are specific things i put in place so then i'm even much happier when that energy changes yeah so this is what the elites do or this is what people who are very very skilled in these things do they just manipulate the energy they're like okay i can't change this but there are specific ways i can defy i can maneuver i know this is going to happen so i can prepare for it but most average person doesn't know this information so they just kind of like oh you know, it's if it happens it happens if you know they 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 don't know they you know when you know something you're more prepared for it you can have some sort of control over it because you are wait for it but also you can do specific things to prepare for a different type of change um so it's understanding that don't and i've spoken about this already you it's not possible to be happy people sell this dream that you're going to be happy even when you achieve everything you you want you're going to by virtue of the law of rhythm you're going to feel sad at some point so when you feel that flux change don't beat yourself up almost don't beat yourself up. i've learned that i think if people have this idea that success looks like i guess holding this energy for a specific amount of time and that's just not realistic um Someone says, how do I know my feelings are real, not exaggerated, or just thoughts? I mean, if you have feelings, they are real. Every feeling is real. If you can feel it, it's real. No matter how how much capacity. I, when you say it's not exaggerated, even, like, I don't know what you're trying, like, what's your question? Because if you feel something, it's real. Unless you're gaslight, gaslighting yourself or in denial to what your your body's feeling. How do you exaggerate feelings? Because if it's already there, it's there. Maybe I'm not understanding your question, but yeah, let me know. Someone says, but how can I make the best of times that I feel miserable? The thing is, you're going to feel miserable regardless at specific times. It's understanding that how how can you transmute? What can you do? The best skill you can learn is how to control your emotions. Because the thing is, when when you're a slave or a victim to how you feel, or your emotions that come like they fleet all the time, they change, they fluctuate... It's very hard to transmute it. Even when you're angry or when you f- experience very, like, p- I guess, intense emotions, it's having the ability to control with them. Once you can control your emotions, you can transmute them. You can think to yourself, how can I do this? A lot of people that feel specific things or feel specific emotions and then act on a whim, you do something and then maybe two hours later, the feeling is worn off and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, I should have, you know, being careful whatever the case is you've done something and now you're like well maybe i overreacted it's very hard but even with specific feelings it's being strategic i think that's what it is that's the word being strategic i think most people allow their emotions to dictate how they act 
but having that almost disciplined people who are the most powerful people are disciplined they don't allow their emotions to dictate how they act at least in situation because they understand that they're not forever they're not going to be there forever when you make decisions on a whim you when you do things because you're feeling specific things over time you're going to you're going to just allow you're not in control the whole point is to be powerful when you're powerful you are in control and i know you can't control everything to a certain degree you have to surrender you can literally have the best of plans but the point is there has to be a certain level of control people who are victim mindsets people war with me type of people those people go through life thinking there is this energy that is against them god is punishing me you know the universe is punishing me something outside my control you know i feel but being disciplined as as it pertains to your emotions allows you to 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 exercise some sort of control to understand that i i can facilitate this i can change this i feel like just shifting that mindset because i think that's where it starts it's very hard to believe that you have control over things when you feel when you're a victim to it right so for me the first thing i had to learn is i'm powerful and not to just say that cliche way like yeah i'm powerful but to actually think i can do this i can this is where i want to go this is what i need to be this is where i want to be maybe in five years we all have goals to what we see or what we want to be okay this is where i want nusala to be in five years how can i get there let's fast you know you, you have to have some sort of idea you can't just have dreams without like ways to do that you know you have to and then okay that's it that's the goal this is what it's going to take me and then focusing your mind on the goal and being strategic on how you're going to get there that's what it is so even when i'm angry or sad those emotions that just you know flee from time to time i'm not going to allow that to i guess allow me to drift off my motive and i think most people allow that well i guess it's you know well there's no point now i guess i'm just being so strategic like i can actually make that happen i'm going it's not even i can it's i will there is something so powerful about that feeling of determination certainty knowing that feeling of like i'm going to make this work i'm going to make this happen I can make this, I I am making it happen. (laughs) It's happening, in fact, as I'm speaking. And most people think that's delulu, like that's delusional. But when you've actually made things happen before, I know for me, I've manifested things that I'm like, okay, yeah. Like this, I'm not even being delusional. I actually physically have evidence. There is no way I could have, I can't believe that that happened or I was able to manifest that thing. So I think even you know remembering i don't know if you guys have manifested things before having ideas of the things that you've actually made happen is empowering it allows you to step into that energy that knowingness that certainty that there is just something so attractive about that confidence that you're going to get to where you want like there is nothing there is no one there is nothing that is going to i guess allow me to forget how powerful i am and a lot of people ask me how do you protect yourself from things like evil eye and how do you protect things from things like witchcraft or whatever the case is and i'm like guys do you not feel like you're powerful enough to one not even for it not to even affect you but two to transcend it and send it back when i was starting my spiritual journey i was always frightened it's almost as though there is someone something that has more power than me how do I protect myself? It's almost in the sense of defending, defense. And that energy is, it's semi-powerful. It's very weak because it's almost that concept. And, you know, you hear, you see a lot of like religious people praying against like the devil and like, I pray that, you know, hold on guys, my lips are getting dry. Let me get some lip gloss. I'm tired of licking them all the the time. Where's my lip gloss? One sec, guys. one sec okay (laughs) what was i saying yeah where people like um 
how can I, how can I what? What was I saying? <laughs> how can I, how can I get rid of witchcraft? How can I get rid of this thing? How can I, it's almost first get into a place, and you know, people, I was, oh, I remember now, I was talking about like, a lot of, you know, religious people are always praying against the devil. It's almost like there is this energy that's out to get me. And that energy is very, like, I have to always be fearful. I have to be afraid. Stay away. And and I'm just like, I do not think, now that I'm obviously, I've left religion, I don't think there is anything that can affect me in a sense that energy, some sort of energy outside of me without me giving it consent. And you want to get to a point where you're so convicted in yourself that there is nothing and even if there is something where is your power because i refuse to believe there is anyone more energetically powerful than i am and not in a narcissistic way that i'm the most powerful being there is i just believe everyone is powerful but the reason why some people don't feel powerful enough is because they've given their power to something their power was taken away but you can always call that on like i'm not any more powerful than you are because we're literally the same we're made of the same things it's either I'm more aware or I'm more strategic and I understand that I understand I have wisdom I have knowledge about such something what makes someone less powerful is because they don't know power is taken away they feel inferior to some sort that's what makes you weak and now your energy is kind of just like decreasing over time but there is no one that is there is no practitioner like people are scared of practitioners um that can do anything to you without i don't want to say consenting to it because people are like well i never consented to this but i got this anyway but when i say consent to it is energetically if you're in a certain vibration you're almost consenting to anything on that same vibration when people get possessed guys i always say this you don't get possessed out of nowhere like oh my god i was walking down you know i was driving down the m way and then this thing came into me. That's not how it works, guys. I'm telling <laughs> people that have been possessed, they were harboring a specific emotion within them. That's what it is. People are always asking me things like, how does like possession work and demon possession? There is no specific entity per se. But you create, if you're in this life long enough, you know that we birth intentions. Everything is, in, I mean, we birth, everything's a manifestation of an intention. So, when you understand that, when you create that, you know, that manifestation, when you create this energy, it's almost, it's like it has an identity of itself. And this is why people talk, uh, this is how people go on to describe things like demons. They're not actually like, there is no demon, like, I, I guess, <laughs> they, they don't exist, at least not in the way people think about them. But what exists is the energy of them, the spirit of it. And we give birth, humans create it these energies and they don't just find you out of nowhere and it's oh my god like i was just aimlessly walking down the street if you don't hold the receptor to it it doesn't you know there are only specific people and if you've noticed that get possessed quote unquote possessed it's specific people that hold or harbor specific emotions that create life that give birth to that energy and over time they're going to act on that energy there is so much when you understand that energy fluctuates and energy moves all the time and energy seeks to 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 i guess to move when you suppress energy this is for people that don't like to feel their feelings people that harbor it's people that distract themselves from i guess feeling those emotions they don't go away just because you're not thinking about them they find messier ways to come out of you and the longer you've harbored something, the more it fests. And the more it fests, or it's just a matter of time that it's going to come out of you in the most messiest ways. You create, you're literally, as you harbor that energy, you create the entity of it. You create a spirit. That is what, I guess, people um, know as demons. Because you've created it. It's now an energy of its own. It has specific you know it's alive energy within itself is alive so that energy is alive you've created this monster this entity and it has you know life of its of its own and so people that get possessed are people that have been harboring a specific emotion a specific vibration for over time and that energy has come out in the messiest ways it could 
So for everyone that's worried about getting possessed, you don't have to worry about it. It's almost like I like to give analogies to help, you know, because my brain, honestly, explaining things is easier when I give like an analogy. It's like moldy bread. For example, if you have if you buy bread and you don't eat it, it's going to get moldy. And if you don't do anything about it, if you don't throw away, it's going to fester. And then over time, maggots are going to, eat, are going to feed on it. And then before now, it's this one thing that was good. It's now this very disgusting. Like, that's just what's going to happen. Energy changes all the time. So yes, once upon a time, it was good. You know, you could eat it. But now it's moldy. It's disgusting. It can make you sick. And it's still there festering and festering that's think about that as energy so say now you have you are harboring specific emotions within yourself over time it's going to fester create life those maggots that you know walking around and eating yeah create and then it's over time before that energy expresses itself within that individual it's just about time and this is the same concept with the holy and i've spoken about this before um you know the christians weren't happy with me yeah, oh well but i've spoken about this this is the same concept of like speaking in tongues when people are like when people get like the holy ghost or when people get um when people channel it's the same energy when you're uh in church and you're trying to speak in tongues you're trying to get to a certain frequency you're trying to get on a certain energy those energies come out of you there is no spirit coming inside of you guys like there is obviously christians would disagree that's fair enough but there is no those things don't come out of you i mean those things don't come into you they come out of you that energy has given you know has given life to some sort of entity that works inside out of you if you like so that's how all spirits are born all spirits good or bad for me no difference it's the same energy at play just coming out or being exercised in different ways bearing fruit differently right so when you understand these things guys you can use that energy to help your life to help you in whatever way you want to someone says does the law of rhythm apply to letting go of people whether good or bad it you can it applies to everything there are specific yes it applies to everything when you have someone um when you let go of a specific bad person of your life you you clear the energy that person in fact have you guys ever like um what's the word ever fall out with someone or even distance yourself from someone it could be a friend it could be a relationship family member it doesn't matter and then you guys don't speak you guys don't interact no contact that person doesn't even exist on the same vibration as you they're of course they live in a different world but they are not in yours and when i say that's that world duh they're not in my life so i guess they're not in but it's like when you've um watched my videos about shifting vibrations and shifting parallel universe and everything of that nature you understand that it's like a what is this i'm trying to think about a way to explain it it's like a lift different flows so when you leave specific people when you walk away from spe specific energies you actually elevate that person no longer exists in your universe understand that this world is the same earth so you don't go into a different earth and i explain this all the time like when you're shifting re re realities and people talk about the concept of shifting realities it's not necessarily they're going to a different earth it's that you're leaving one vibration and going on to another People don't understand this, but where you are, the people that you see, in fact, the people that catch your eye or the people that you notice, you guys are more time. Or if you, if, I'll even say people that you connect with or you have a connection with someone, you go on a date, you guys connect really well, or you have a friend, you guys talk, good chemistry. That person, you guys mirror each other. That person, that person is on the same vibration as you. That's why they were even able to catch your eye. You were able to notice them and connect with them so well. Otherwise, if you're not on the same vibration, you're not going to like get along as much. Think about it. Like when you outgrow friends, you no longer even, 
you can't even hold a conversation with them anymore you guys don't see the world the same you know they see it differently you see it differently it's not because their world is different i mean it's not like their world is invalid you guys are literally on different frequencies and ways of seeing life so when you let go of someone and you literally let them go in a sense that they are now experiencing the universe in their own way and they're going to meet people that mirror their own perception of that universe if that makes sense so it's like when you make relationships with people or when you connect with people you connect with them because you you connect with them because they mirror aspects of yourself so like when you think about your best friend she mirrors or he mirrors aspects of yourself you see yourself in them otherwise you wouldn't even be friends in the first place they reflect to you everybody's you pushed out you guys are part of that um they reflect aspects of you so when you level up or when you glow up some friends are not going to mirror that energy within you anymore and what happens energy breaks that cord that connected you guys together that mirror that you could you can't see yourself you can't relate you guys can't have a conversation and that's how you you, you go on you guys cut ties they move on with their lives you move on with your with your own life so that's what that is so everybody that you attract you know when people say things like wrong person wrong timing or whatever the case whatever the saying how the saying goes wrong person wrong time is that a good person good <laughs> what what's the how do you say <laughs> wrong person wrong timing right person wrong timing wrong right right person wrong timing <laughs> there is no such thing there is no such thing everybody was the right person at the right time and people hate when i say this <laughs> i have videos on it already um yeah the person you know because we were like well i've attracted people who are really mean to me or people that were like narcissists and everything but let me tell you something everybody that you've had a relationship with right was the right time was the right person at the right time in a sense that if you did not meet that person you would have met another person just like them but with a different face so that's just what it is if you didn't attract that narcissistic man or that narcissistic woman you would have attracted another narcissistic woman just with a different face so even if he wasn't that specific person because you mirrored specific energies because remember a relationship isn't just one-sided you contribute energy comes together so there is something you know you connected in the same way and if you connected with that person and allowed for that energy remember everything is like a seed you give rise to this energy you give rise to this relationship this friendship two energies are coming together they don't just come together like oh my god like I, I didn't contribute anything it just happened to me there is a sense of accountability thank you guys for the gifts if it wasn't going to be that person if it wasn't your ex if it wasn't your friend it would have been another person who's exactly like them guys i kid you not just with a different face just with a different face thank you guys for the gifts i appreciate you so it would have it would have been the same person when you think about it the reason why you can look back and be like well i regret that person i regret that situation whatever the case was is because now you're aware there is a version of you now that had to go through that for you to even have that awareness most of you guys are empaths with no boundaries who do you think you're going to attract of course you're going to attract a narcissist and then it's like oh my god like you had to watch that you know how i just spoke about like people you know everybody's a reflection of you in a certain degree when you see your friend you're seeing actually aspects of yourself of course your friend is their own person they're their own individual without you but when you connect with someone strongly especially relationships friendships do actually um you see parts of yourself in them they mirror to you who you are this is why even when you're healing it's no longer about them per se of course they are their own person it's about you what you saw the energy connected to who what they brought out of you because it was you to begin with 
you know the, the love and this is when you, you know people say the love you feel for other people it's actually just you it's they're just mirroring that which is already happening inside even when you see your favorite artist or a specific skill set that oh i wish i i don't have that but i admire that it's the beauty that you see in other people it's actually yours guys because your ability to even see it to appreciate it your ability to even resonate they are mirroring to you that creativity it might be in a different way Obviously, I like specific artists that can sing. I'm not the greatest singer, so I guess they can't mirror the voice or the vocals. But they reflect to me a certain creativity, a specific energy that also exists within me. So what you love in other people actually is within you too. Um, anyway, going back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, there is, no such, there is no such thing as right person, wrong timing. Because if it wasn't them, it was going to be the, another person who is just like them. Because that person mirrored to you, you, mirrored to you, you, you know, we meet horrible people all the time. And sometimes it's because we're naive. We don't know. We grow. You know, I know I've attracted some people that weren't great, but I know if it wasn't going to be that specific person, it was, it was just about time that I met someone with those characteristics, with those traits. It was just about time. So I had to learn. Thank you so much, Luwa Luanda, for the gift. I'm getting so many from you. Ah! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the gifts. I really do appreciate it. I I'm happy that, you know, you guys are resonating and sending the gifts. I'm going to leave here rich, guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's understanding. When you understand this, you stop being so much of a victim. You start to take accountability. You start to look at life differently because it's not, oh my God, these things are happening to me and I don't know how. I'm not saying that there are certain things that, again, are outside our control. Yes, things happen to us all the time. But when you start to understand energy and how it works and when you understand that your energy is what's potent, what was a reflection inside out, how you see the world, in fact. I've already said this. We could be in the same room and see different things. We could look at the same thing. Imagine, it's like, try or like, think about going on a trip, like a field trip with your friend, you're on the bus, you guys are driving, whatever the case is. And the things that are going to catch your eye compared to the things that are going to catch your friend's eye or your partner's eye or your mother's eye are different. The things, the colors that pull you in, the people, the faces, the things, are not the same people think we're looking at the world like the same i mean we all have eyes to a certain degree but to a certain degree <laughs> we all have eyes right but we're not seeing things the same way we could look at the same thing we're not looking at it the same way and i made a video about this i said you don't believe what you see you see what you believe you see where you've already decided to believe whether it's true or not because it, it doesn't even matter whether it's true it's true understanding seeing everything is inside your brain actually you know your eyes pick up on some stimuli a light kicks in and it goes hits the back of your eye and then neurotrans you know neurotransmitters it goes into the brain and then the image is actually projected at the back of your head that's how you can see something but everything is internal. When you realize that your internal world is like 80% of your, you know, uh, mix up or affects 80% of your outside world, you guys will start to take some accountability, you guys. You guys will understand how powerful your energy is. And you understand that it starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. So instead of even like, how can I... There is something so attractive about changing from the inside out when most people are trying to manifest i'm going to have manifestation classes very soon trying to manifest from an outwards perspective it never works i'm, <laughs> I'm telling you in a, in a sense that they are doing things outside in the outside like out like outwardly to try to change what's going on inside when it's the other way around change the inside and the outside will change by itself um literally so when you understand it's not about chasing after things of course there's a certain degree of chasing things you can't i can't manifest money and then sit down for hours and just it's coming sorry guys 
and then say to myself, it's coming to me. There's a certain balance to things. And, there, and the thing is, again, even when it comes to manifestation, there is truth to what people say, but it's not black and white. At least not in the way people teach it. It's not black and white. It's understanding that there is an equal balance to, of course, the inside is way more important. But it's understanding that there are cheat codes to this, guys. <laughs> there are cheat codes to this. And should I give one? Should I give one out? Which is literally so basic, but I, I even want to make a video about it. Lately, I've been enjoying going live more than actually making content. I like just talking like real time and then answering questions. Um... Uh. <laughs> um. Someone says I attract so many narcissists. Damn. So it's me causing this. I want you to understand that when you always attract narcissists, ask yourself. And on, honestly, be and be honest with yourself, um, Sammy. Be honest with yourself. If it's a pattern, it's a synchronicity at this point. It's a synchronicity. It's one one time. Fair enough. This person, this person, this person, this person, and just can it keeps. It's almost like I'm always attracting a specific type of person. Different faces, same character. What is it about this specific character? Am I attracted to? Because it takes two to tango. It takes two. You, they, they don't just appear out of nowhere. It takes two to tango. What? And be honest. You can journal this. You can think about it. You can meditate on it. And I want you to be honest. What is it? Am I gaining? How does this connection feel safe to me? Because the brain... Who attract the same type of person not because they're good for us but because they're safe they're familiar it's understanding what is it or what are they attracted in me because if i can figure it out they're definitely attracted to me because of something do i have a specific habit trait do i a lot of people that attract narcissists have this thing where they, they say to me i like to see the good in people so that's why but why because you saying to me I like to see the good in people. Why? Because you're not just seeing the good in people. How does that validate who you are? Because everything we do, even when it's like we're doing it for other people, we're so kind and we're so nice and we just want everyone to see happy. That it does something for us. Does it validate our sense of purpose? Our worth? Does it, you know, say to us that we're good people? Does it you know validate or give us comfort for people who have uh, a, a fear of abandonment does that reassure us that the people are not going to leave us now that we're so good to them that does that give us a sense of purpose why do you do that and be honest because that's where the answer lies that's where the answer lies it's not outside of you darling it's literally inside of you and it's triggering to know that damn i really don't contribute to these things but it's, it's also freeing because then you can break the pattern you know <laughs> someone says those questions yeah <laughs> are you south african are you south african Um, oh, yeah, Ugandan, <laughs> uh, fellow sister. Someone says, I have an avoidant personality disorder. It feels like, um, contacts with person sucks my energy. Um, if you have a, an avoidant attachment style, I wish I've worked with so many clients. There is the essence of every attachment style, to be fair, especially the insecure ones, such as avoidant, is fear. Fear of being engulfed, fear of losing, 
um yourself in a relationship fear of um fear of almost like feeling imprisoned feeling like your sense of freedom your independence is going to be taken away someone is trying to take and it comes from children it could be many reasons but the main reason is you grew up with emotionally unavailable parents who are very hot and cold with you so their um their love wasn't wasn't regular as in it's very unpredictable you never know and when a child is raised in an environment that is hot and cold they're raised in an environment where love isn't the constant they never felt loved their parents were either working they felt neglected maybe the mother or father was always working they learned that their independence is their form of safety love feels alien love feels unfamiliar it doesn't feel safe remember the brain doesn't care about you being happy that's the list of its worries it's how what kept you safe in this environment what kept you safe and if this is what kept you safe and the thing about the brain the brain doesn't care to start to and this is why it's so hard to i guess to be develop new habits because the brain doesn't care to start creating new strategies to the ones that it already has so for example if you're a child that was neglected somehow emotionally with emotionally available children i don't know guys my eye there was something in my eye if you're um you were neglected as a child uh, uh your brain came up with a way to keep you safe somehow and then in the future the brain isn't going to to create a new strategy the brain's like okay this is what kept her safe before same strategy it worked oh well it could be the most toxic habit it's it's oh well it's going to work it's almost like when you get immunized you know when you get like um i don't want to say the word because i don't want tiktok to take this life down but when you get immunized right when you get um the injection you get that uh, you know weekend virus or they put some dead dormant virus in you so next time when you face the same you know but virus or whatever the case is the body already has receptors to kill that virus or that whatever the case is the bacteria so that's the same thing the body you know so once the your cells get accustomed to a specific virus when it encounters the same form of virus, it doesn't try to find new ways to get rid of it. It's like, oh, we remember this is this virus. This is how we got rid of it. We're going to use the same methods. Same thing with the brain. You go through something traumatic, especially as a child, your subconscious mind is being programmed. Uh, it creates a, a strategy and it, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter if this is what is healthy or unhealthy in the future in our future relationships when we're in we, we, we have this specific problem again it's like oh what kept us safe growing up okay let's let's do that let's do that the brain is like okay i'm not going to care about trying to find a new strategy on, of doing this this worked if it's not broken don't fix it right let's do let's do what we used to do as children and then people go back and you realize that even when you're going through your um specific moments of feeling unworthy feeling good enough feeling specific feelings the feelings are always going to feel familiar it's always going to feel familiar because it doesn't matter what's triggered it it could have been this person it could have been your ex it could have been your teacher it could have been your colleague whatever the case is it's always going to go back to a specific feeling that you felt before thank you so much abza for the gift it's always going to be a specific feeling and you're always going to do specific things that you used to do as a child. If you love to isolate yourself as a child, well, isolate. If you're someone who was hyper-independent, you know, your parents weren't emotionally there for you. And you learned that this world, you just have to fend for yourself. You are all you have. You enter relationship. The relationship, you know, your partner wants to get close to you. They want to... um you know, of course, be intimate, be vulnerable with you. But that is so threatening. Love is threatening to you. This feels unsafe. This this is not familiar. This is not what we're used to. We're used to people being this way to us. So when we're in the situation, we don't know what to do. So let's flee. Let's run. Let's avoid. Let's dismiss. Let's suppress. Let's do anything but to face this. This feels unsafe. Understand that, especially when you're avoidantly attached, 
you're in a situation or you're in a place that triggers your immune system your fight or flight that's what it is it's like uh, i'm literally leaving and the thing is the things that are scaring you are things that are pure it's love it's intimacy it's vulnerability it's something that you should feel safe to you but because your energy your body your you know it's not safe it's like well next and what you know what happens is you attract partners you feel safe around partners that are not good for you but that's what feels safe so some people are in certain relationships and like why am i rationally you know logically you're like well this doesn't feel good i know i don't like being here it's not something that's enjoyable for me but i can't find myself to leave for some reason i feel stuck in this i complain about it i've told all my friends how much i hate this situation that i'm in but there is a sense and if you're being really honest with yourself there is an aspect of yourself that feels safe in that it's familiar because now your body's used to that your body knows it's predictable it's almost like watching a film and knowing how it's going to end this has happened before and then this is how people go through these patterns of attracting the same emotionally unavailable partners even when they don't like it even when it's you know uh, it's almost like watching a film and knowing how it's going to end it's safe your body already knows what's going to how it's going to encounter that abandonment that happens over time you know yeah guys if you're someone that struggles with the fear of uh, avoid um who someone who is insecurely attached whether it's anxious or avoidant i am happy to work with you i offer consultations to clients the links to my websites are in the bio my reviews are there my testimonials are there my i work um online through online so it's not you know oh i'm in the u.s can i yes you can you're in south africa you can wherever you are in the world you can because my services are through skype or zoom um so if you guys want to book with me i'm happy to work with you uh, what is sorry guys um let me read some comments Someone says, ever since I awakened and listened to your videos, I am attracting happiness and happy. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Shoki. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people or listening to specific people, it really does help, you know, and I'm happy that I'm helping someone. Um, that's, that's like the best compliment I've received today. <laughs> um... I don't know why this this strand of hair is in my face. Someone says energy flows faster in pre-wired neural circuits. Yes, yes, yes. Someone says, I have an avoidant attachment style, but I always attract guys who seem to love me, but I can't reciprocate. Why? <laughs> Why do you think that is that is the case? Is love unsafe for you? Does it feel unsafe? Yes, guys. Um, I've said a lot. I actually came on this live to talk about manifestation, but because I lost, I lost my trail of thought. I just went on and on and on. But guys, do you know? I want to start a manifestation class. Um, but do you guys know the best apps I can use? I I, I don't know which one to use or anyone who is really good. Any websites that you guys recommend I should do this? I want to actually create like. Uh, powerpoint slides and actually like break it down obviously being on live is cute and everything but i really do want to create a class like as in class as in people are attending um that kind of thing do you guys have any ideas i want to zoom and the thing with zoom even my own 
uh consultations with my clients are usually on skype i i'm very i don't know about zoom i don't know about zoom how many cl- how many students do you think i can have do you have you guys ever teams page oh patreon is a good one patreon but i've never i don't know i don't, I don't know how it works I don't know how it works because I will be charging. I'll be honest, guys. I will be charging for my classes, but I will charge about 20, 20 pounds. Um, I charge about, I, I wouldn't make it too expensive because, um, I, I kind of want it to be affordable. It's probably one of the cheapest services I, I, I will offer. I want it to be like 20 pounds, which is about maybe like $23. Don't quote me on this now. I'm not sure. Hold on, guys. That's like what twenty five dollars, um, US dollars. I don't know about other ca- currencies, guys. You have to check for yourself. <laughs> but I want to make it twenty 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 five. Um, but I'm thinking about because right now I've created a few slides, but I'm thinking where should I actually like teach this? I want it to be live, and I also want the option to record. So as in, if someone misses or you know books with me or you know book the class. But something happened, they couldn't attend, you know, because of life, responsibilities and that kind of... I want it to be recorded. But I'm not very tech-savvy, guys, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm not the most tech-savvy, so I wanted to ask your opinions. If you guys have done this before, or you have, you're have, you a teacher yourself, you know, you, you've you attended someone's classes. Um, Yeah, Zoom, Zoom, can I... Because I, I think I'm going to get a few people in this live and in, in those classes is there a limit to how many i can have because i don't want to be limited teams teams is a good one teams i've used teams before oh teams hmm. actually teams could be patreon i've heard of it i don't know how it works is it reliable is it reliable Okay, Nox says Patreon is fairly easy to navigate. Yeah, Patreon. Patreon? Okay. Would you guys attend? If I actually, because when I do money, oh, because I already offer um manifestation cheat codes on on my website. So if you guys want to click in the link in the bio, you would see it. But I want a class, as in I'm breaking it down. I I want like an hour, an hour long class. A full hour we're breaking it down and the thing is i don't like because i've attended a few classes of you know when i've started my spirituality and the, it's like they give information which is helpful but it's very hard to be applicable and it's very simple and i think that's the thing I've, i'm realizing a lot is the things that they teach you is true but it's so simplistic to a point where it's like okay fair enough and when people say things like oh just think you know i know for me when i was getting I've been pulling my lashes for the last minutes because there is an eyelash in my eye. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, they say things like "think about it," yeah, you know, do you like um, what are those called? Vision boards, and yes, but when you understand, it's not even about the thought. Actually, let me not talk too much because I want people to actually attend the live, <laughs> to attend my classes. I don't want to give too much away, but it's understanding it's not even about the thought. It's about two things: electromagnetic thoughts thoughts that have been charged with intention one having am i revealing too much but obviously i discovered that there is more to what is taught than (laughs) than you know what they give off you know you know thoughts are electric you know electric electric you know electric impulses fire up the heart is magnetic when you mix those two polarities, it helps, you know. Anyway, uh, would you guys attend? Someone said, "Would will you be recording the?" Yeah, I have to record the class because if someone misses the class for whatever reason, they obviously have to. Um, they have to have a copy of it somehow. And the thing is, because it's a class. People can get to ask questions back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Obviously, live is here, but because 
I'm not going back and forth. Like, obviously, you guys are leaving your questions down there, but I'm not answering every single question. More time, I'm just talking. If one question catches my eye, I answer it. But because if it's a if it's a class and you've actually paid for a service, you want to understand, you want to get, you want to live there, you know, fully aware, that kind of thing. Someone says, what do you think of Barbie, the movie? I didn't like it. Mm -mm. someone said will the classes be interactive yeah they'll be interactive kind of like when you go to actually like a class the teacher teaches and then at the end do you have any questions type of thing and also making it like, like less serious you, you know it's not a lecture it's not it's something fun a few jokes here and there a bit of laughter but again you know getting the service that you paid for living with the knowledge Um. someone says why did i not like the barbie movie i didn't understand it <laughs> i don't know it's not my thing it's just not my test in mo I, I, I went to the cinemas to watch it in fact, it was a date, but, you know, that's a whole topic within itself. I went to see the Barbie movie. It wasn't it, personally. It wasn't it, but what was it? Like, I didn't get it. It wasn't it, but what was it? Like, what was, like, I literally left, <laughs> I left the cinema with question marks in my head. I didn't understand. But I guess it's... Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just not my type of movies. But, you know, I know you guys... Some of you guys probably like it. You know, the whole feminism thing. And I, I don't get it. I don't... I just... I, I don't pay... But, but to each its own, you know? Someone says, How to break generational curse. Spiritual curses. There is so much that goes into it. I have so much to do it. When you break, when you want to break a generational process, you you break it on all planes of existence. I've spoken about this in my previous lives. Physically, physical plane, mental plane, spiritual plane. Just because it's spiritual doesn't mean it hasn't manifested mentally and physically. So when you're trying to get rid of something, especially it's been there for a long time, understand that it's grew. It's almost like a like a like a seed, or like a tree. You can't just pluck off the fruit that the tree gives rise to you have to literally go and get the root of the, the get the root of the tree because now the tree has grown and it has manifested in various ways so you have to i've spoken about this i don't think i'm going to be talking about this again but i have many videos many lives about this maybe i should make a video on it make it easier Someone says it leaned more into white feminism struggles. Yeah, I, the I don't even remember it because I zoned <laughs> the Barbie film. Yeah, I found it very cringe, guys. I'll be honest. I I, I was cringing a little bit. I appreciate, I guess, the cinematography, the entire concept. But it wasn't it. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't it. I think... I don't know. Did you guys like it? Did you guys... Did you, if you if you watched it, did you like it? I just, you know what kind of uh, movies I really like? I like thrillers. Psychological thrillers. I like to watch a film. And then, like, with plot twists in it. I'm not really into, like, the... You know, romantic, chill, predictable films. I like watching films that are very like, you know, like Gone Girl. Have you guys seen that? I like movies like that. I like Inception. I like Behind Her Eyes. I like movies that I feel like I've left with some. Like, I want to talk about it 30 minutes after it's finished. Because I'm trying to figure out what did I just watch. But like in an interesting way. I like to watch like literatures i like to i like to feel like i'm being challenged in some way i like to question my mind i like to think wait what was that 
in a good way not in a barbie way like what was like what actually was that but like in a way that oh my god that's sin. and the thing about me that i've actually realized when i watch a movie i don't just watch the plot i'm i'm watching like the scenes in my mind guys i kid you know i'm like oh how could this scene have been better how could their acting have been better i'm looking at the lighting i'm looking i look at i don't just watch it i analyze it i criticize positives and negatives oh this scene could have been better if she did this if the lighting was i watch it as if i'm the director literally so it's just i've realized something someone says inception is so confusing it's like dreams yeah i i love that i like the end where it's like what was it and then you're having to think and you're having these debates with your friends and that kind of thing i like movies like that psychological thrillers um yeah i don't know it's, it, that's that's my kind of movies um i like plot twists i like to think one way but then the the writer or the director like nah it's not that it's this and then it's like is it this though or is it that you will find out that's the suspense of it all i feel like i'm you know that's the thing and i like movies where the ending can be a bit confusing or the ending is so abstract that it could have multiple interpretations because i like literature a lot i like to like really read and evaluate those kind of things like the ending this scene was so powerful or when she said this and she said it that way or that you know i'm that type of person i like those like oh you know someone says they liked it it was entertaining and made me feel some things but it wasn't my favorite i mean that's fair some people you know you like what you like right some people like the barbie film i didn't like it i i didn't pay for it it was in cinema i wouldn't have gone to i wouldn't have done <laughs> but um yeah i like i like movies that like make me think you know even the matrix they filmed the matrix if you guys haven't seen it um i have a whole breakdown about it on my instagram the whole breakdown of it literature again my thing right have if you have, haven't seen it it's on my highlights if you just go and, and i thought to myself i should make a video about it but that's the thing i have all these ideas but i never execute them because it's easier for me to just sit here and just talk and answer questions than to actually make content these days i haven't feel i've been i've been falling out of love with creating content um but if you've seen the matrix and you want to see my own understanding of the movie the matrix which is very different from what other people say it is it's kind of go to my instagram follow me first please and then two go through my highlights and then you i think it's right there i have a few unpopular opinions there i have my you know go check it out Someone said Lucy. Yeah, Lucy was a good film as well. It was quite good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, before I go, I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> My lips. I, I don't know why this is happening. I don't. One sec, guys. I want to talk to you about i actually spoke about this before but i want to talk about it again because i'm going to make content on it i'm going to make a video about it do you guys know how powerful eye contact is and i'm going somewhere by the way with this <laughs> um did you know that you can still or you can plant seeds in someone else's mind by looking at them Did you, I want to make a video about that. It's a whole concept of stealing energy. But eyes, eyes are very powerful. Someone says, no, that's scary. <laughs> it's not as scary when you understand it. I feel like when you understand something, it's less, you're only afraid of what you don't know. But when you understand, so thing is, yeah, you know, people say things like eyes at the windows to the soul. 
or when you look at someone there's an energetic connection there in a sense that there is a like for example if you're looking at someone you love you know giving the eye contact just before you kiss or or when you're intimate with someone and you're looking at them or even just like oh look at me look at my eyes or people people say things like i know you're lying look at me when you say that there was a specific reason why because when you look at someone and when i say look i don't just say like i guess fairly look i mean look look you know that eye contact that is intense Mm-hmm. that one <laughs> that one it's very powerful because it says so much about the other person and you can also plant seeds in them if you understand how that energy works and i want to talk about it i don't know why i get excited when i talk about things like this guys i don't know why i get excited but it's very interesting because i just learned about this so i'm still educating myself but it's i want to share before i make content on it and i have spoken about it in my previous life but i want to talk about it again because why not but when you look at someone in the eye there is an exchange of energy eyes are very powerful that, that is literally how you perceive the world your eyes are powerful when you maintain a certain level of eye contact with someone you're exchanging energy whether you know it or not specifically if you're holding it with intention guys don't 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 be scared it's nothing to be scared like it's i know it sounds scary but i don't think it's as scary as it sounds when you and we're going we're getting there okay so when you look at someone in the eye as in the pupil i'm not not the inner corner no as in you <laughs> you're looking at their pupil you can hold an intention for a specific especially if you're connected to this person to some way so if this is your wife your husband your friend your colleague even if you maintain a certain eye contact with this person it's even better if you con connect with them in other ways so if you kiss them or if you shake their hand you know different ways of exchanging energy you can manipulate energy guys in that way so if you look at someone <laughs> if i'm look if you look at someone in the eye yeah and you hold a specific intention the intention in your mind changes your vibration and how you operate so it's not necessarily that the intention is what's going to plant things in their mind it, no it's the energy you vibrate you understand that everybody's vibrating we've spoken about this many times everybody has their own vibration and everybody vibrates like for example if you're confident if you're a conf if you're feeling confident the energy that you're vibrating at is going to be different from maybe when you don't feel as confident when you're happy you're always holding different energies right so when you hold a specific intention and you're looking at someone in the eye specifically someone you want to be like or someone you admire someone you love whatever the case so your intention could be different if it's your if it's someone you admire you want to exchange that energy so you can be more like them so you're stealing their energy te technically but not in the way that it sounds because stealing you know negative connotation right but there's an exchange of that or when you look at someone in the eye and then you have an intention and it's an intention of what instead of i guess trying to be like them or taking specific characteristics from them you're trying to get them to do something you just look them in the eye, guys, and hold that intention and hold that energy. I'm telling you. I know I've done it. But um, you hold that energy. And there is... It, it's... Okay. Let me explain this. It's eye contact. It's holding the intention in your mind. The intention is going to change your energetic vibration. And because you're holding this energy with this specific person who you're connected to because you're not doing this with a stranger right you're not just doing this with anyone you're doing this with people you know you people you specific things right so understanding that you can actually exchange energy with energies with someone you can steal someone's people can people even do this knowingly or knowingly knowingly or knowingly we are always doing this some people might do this whether they know it or not but there is an exchange that's happening you can literally steal from you can even plant seeds in someone's mind but just look do you guys understand what telepathy is and people are gonna think you know you know that's crazy but 
I know I've done it. So maybe I'm crazy. Who knows, right? But um, <laughs> um, hold on. Let me drink some water. <laughs> So, if you, actually, I think I saw a video of someone on TikTok say something like this. When she's on a date, when she's on a date, she holds a specific eye contact with someone because obviously you're either out on dinner with them or, you know, you're, all, you're not going to be looking down. There is a speck. And when it comes to eye contact, specifically when it's intention, like for example, if you're about to kiss someone, that's eye contact is powerful. Your energies are literally drawing in together. Or if you're, you just had a job interview and you hold someone's hand and you're literally shaking their hand and you're looking at them. There is an energy exchange there. Speci I'm not talking about just some random eye contact. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. I'm not talking some random thing. I'm talking about specific energy guys and when you have in that mix with intention even sexual sexual you know exchange you guys know what i'm talking about holding that with specific intentions is insane is insane and having that intention whilst you maintain the eye contact you could literally be talking to that person but obviously not out loud because that's crazy right but you're talking to them or what you want them to do or what you would prefer so if you've just finished a job interview oh thank you for coming in um we'll hear you will hear from us soon right you just <laughs> you just finished your job interview there is this, oh, you're shaking your hand or oh, thank you and you're looking at them and then in your mind guys i'm i kid you're saying specific things that you you want so in that situation you could say you're going to hire me that that's 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 what you what that's the intention you're having and as you're shaking their hand as you're looking at them there's an energy it's a whole you've the vibration is changed so you're looking at this person in the eye the eye contact obviously you're not going to be looking at you want to show you're confident but the intention you hold whilst doing that is so powerful i use that information as you'd like and these are the things i want to share in my manifestation class obviously i shared a little bit with you guys but you're saying these things in your head. So as you're, you know, thank you so much for coming in. You'd hear from us very soon. Um, thank you. So you're obviously, you're shaking their hand too. You're looking at them. And you're holding a specific, you're going to hire me. And you <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's, let me read some comments. Someone said, get to the point. I, I was getting to the point. Someone says, explain the intention part. The intention is what you desire to come out of that situation, what you want. So if you're trying to be more like that person or take something from them, when I say take something, still still has a bad negative connotation. So maybe that's not the word. But trying to be like them, that's the intention. That's what you desire, what you want from the situation. It could, It's going to be different in whatever situation it is. Yeah, it's the intention that you have. What, what do you intend to come out of the situation, literally? Someone, someone says, how does free will play a part in this? Let me tell you something about free will. <laughs> Let me drink some water. I'm getting too comfortable in these lives, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, the thing about free will is we're always... And this is an um, unpopular opinion, but this is my opinion. Okay, This is what I generally think. I think knowingly or unknowingly we're always to some degree affecting someone else's in, um, free will. Yes. Because let's go back to the example of the job. If I manifest, pray, whatever the case is, energetically trying to manipulate energy so I can get that job, I'm trying to manipulate technically the employer's free will so then they can look at me favorably instead of other candidates and other people. 
you know, other candidates could have had more financial issues. I guess my another candidate could have been a single mom with like six kids. But I'm going to manipulate energy to allow the employer to look at me favorably. I messed up someone's free will to a certain extent. But Oreza, when you manipulate anything, you're changing it. And we're always manipulating. It can be bad, it could be good. Manip we all manipulate things, guys. Manipulation, as much as it's got a negative connotation, there are things that you can manipulate that are good things. You can manipulate certain intentions for the greater good. So that within itself, you changing specific situations or situations are linked to people who you're not knowingly or unknowingly also affecting. So how does free will come into this? Free will comes into everything. You all technically have a sense of free will, but if someone is manifesting me, they're affecting, they're using their energy to pull me in or to do whatever they are trying to do. Obviously, I can be aware of that and say no, if, especially if you're more like, spiritually aware. But if you're not, then what happens to your free will there? To a certain degree, you need to understand that we're all, is, uh, we're all connected. If I pull one string of the end, it's going to affect the people that are connected to that end of the this, 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 this string. That's just what it is. When I pull my energy back from where it is, whoever is sitting on my power, it's going to affect them. Um, it, it, I, it, it might not even be anything about anyone else, but because people are attached to certain energies that I'm pulling back to myself, they're going to be affected. So that's what I genuinely believe. <laughs> Carvel says she... Um, you love the giggles. <laughs> Thank you. See? Mike says that I've made people smile and laugh just with my intention by looking at them. See? You manipulated energy right there. So. We're all manipulators. We're all manipulate, And you have... If you everyone is actually, you can't go through life without manipulating some sort of energy, whether you know it or not. Manifesting within itself is not something you, we all manifest from the minute you were born, you've been manifesting. You just are now more aware of it. It's like breathing, you automatically do it. Now that you're aware that you can automatically breathe, you can manually breathe. I can hold my breath, I can inhale, breath work, and all that kind of thing. But we've been doing it ever since, right? But now that I know okay, this is what, you know, I can control this now. I can, you know, have some sort of control over this thing that is already happening. You can't change it, but I can try to control it and try to bring things that I want within myself, you know? Thank you so much for the rose sugar. Someone says, Bob says, what's the law of assumption? It literally is what it means. You assume something to be the case and that's it. When you hold an assumption of something, you're holding a specific energy. And nine times out of ten, what you assume to be true will be true. So that's actually the law of assumption. You assume holding specific assumptions of what will unravel will affect the energy within itself. So that's just literally what that is. We're all connected. Someone says, a reminder to focus on God, not worldly things. Hmm. Okay. I'd say you can focus on both. Except you might... You, are you a Christian? If you're a Christian, we're not on the same page. Because for me, my idea of focusing on God is me focusing on the highest... And the most greatest thing for me, because I am my God. But if you believe, you know, we have, there is some will of some, then I guess that's where we disagree. But for me, the will of God is the will that is in the highest of my being, me being on the right path. So, yes, 
so i can focus on that for we literally live in the world when you say you don't focus on worldly things we're in the world no uh, you get you, you know we're in the world i gotta focus on i need to, i need money to pay these bills that is worldly things i have to right i don't know I don't, it's, it's just me Anyway, I've been on live for a, a while. I'm I wanna I'm thinking about creating content, guys. Um, like videos, but I'm out of ideas. I like to come here and just talk and vent and giggle and everything of that nature. But lately, I've been falling out of love. Is it time to be a bit intimate and like vulnerable? I've been feeling i'm motivated to create content like i like going live and just talking because it just feels like it's not as serious you know when you're talking making videos it's like Ugh. but when it's here it's late i'm literally in my bedroom i'm chill i'm drinking i'm sipping on some water i've got my headscarf on it's almost 11 in the uk we love the live thank you so much for everyone that likes the live and everybody that was sending the likes i even keep i always forget to say thank you and i keep i forget to remind you but i'm already on 25k over 25k likes thank you so much thank you for liking it and thank you for everyone that's gifted me i know i have my top gifters up there i appreciate you thank you so much you like the lives more than my videos really People think a lot of people prefer the videos, and a lot key. I like the lives better because I get to just talk. But the videos is good because people come in and they ask me same questions over and over again. But when there is a video there, I can always direct them. I've already spoken about this here. I've already spoken about that there. I've already spoken about that there. So it's easier to just, you know, this is why I can talk and talk and talk. People are gonna come in and out of the live and be like hey what's this and this and that and i've already answered it and it's like i have to repeat myself do you know how many lives i have on youtube guys and most of the questions you asked me already said and answered but that's the thing about having live videos because they're so long Pe people come in and out um people are like well i was like i already answered this question and it's like well i have to say it again and then they leave and someone else asks the same question and it's like okay this is too much someone said wildly is it immortal or evil to worship gods like cleopatra um shoes there is no such no it's not evil who taught you and that's the thing guys even when you're worshiping a specific type of god whether that's jesus or what you're worshiping aspects of yourself i said it yeah you just don't it's just a representation of that it's almost like there was a specific energy and you've given it a name and you're calling on that energy but that energy is actually within you. So you're awakening that which is dormant within you. So even when it's Jesus or when it's Allah, Buddha, whatever. Elohim. Those things are more energies than they are people. Oshun is an energy. It's not actually a person. I mean, a goddess, you know, deity. But she's a representation of a specific characteristic. So fertility, water and all that kind of thing, right? So Cleopatra, you know, yes, some of these people who have, could have existed, but they're known for specific energies. I mean, specific characters, right? So even when you're worshipping these people, you're not worshipping them. You're just pulling something that you want within you. So when you want something and you're trying to awaken something, sometimes it's easier to have a representation of that which you're worshipping. So then, you know, you manifest that intention faster. That's, that's not any different from Jesus or whatever the case is. So it's not wrong. It's not It's not evil. Because you asked me if it's evil. It's not evil. What is evil, actually? That's a good question. That's something you should ask. But it's not evil. Just I, I like to work with different gods and goddesses whenever I want to. So if I'm trying to bring out specific things within myself that I'm finding difficult... I like to work with specific energies that are no names that represent those energies. It helps sometimes. And if I don't want to do that, then I just stop and then go on to the next. Sometimes I don't even work with anything because it's easiest for me to just bring that energy out anyway. But if I'm finding it difficult, 
I just work with different things. It's almost like going to like, it's like shopping, right? <laughs> going to the store and you want specific ingredients to make a specific food. And then, for example, you look at this thing, so, oh, this will be great to add to that. Well, I don't have that at home. So let me just get this. Let me get that. Let me get that. And those things are just different things you're going to combine together to create this delicious meal. I don't know if that makes sense, but in my mind, the analogy made sense. So sometimes you kind of like, there's different things in the store or in your closet or in your kitchen that you might want to use for when you need them. So if you don't need it, you don't need to use it. And sometimes you don't even need anything at all. But if you're in a state of, you know, need, and you need a specific energy that you are finding difficult erecting within yourself, there you go. There you go. It's not evil. Except if you're a Christian and, or a Muslim and you believe those things, then... It's going to be evil as a result of that, but it's it's silly. It's silly. Um. Someone says, can I manipulate the energy of eye contact using the photo to bring back my, to bring back an ex? You can. You can. But is that wise? I'm not judging. But it's very important that sometimes when you're manifesting something or a person, there is a specific... How do I explain this? You have to... It's almost like a magnet, right? You want this thing, this thing also wants you, you come together, right? You you, you, you come, you collide, I don't know. <laughs> so even when you're manifesting something, and this is something I'll talk about in my manifestation classes, um, you want to not work on the outside. Because when you're manifesting, because, you know, in that, in your case, you want to manifest an expat, your, your intention is to bring something to you. But remember, you have to be attract, two things have to come together. They have to be attracted to each other, like a magnet, together, collide, come together, right? So, yes, that's the one side of the pole. You bring in this person, this energy together. But what about your energy? Is it attracted to? Am I making sense? Are you, I don't want to say, are you attractive to him or to her? That's not even what I mean. I mean, is your energy in alignment to that energy? right because things don't just happen there is more to manifestation but what then people you don't just bring something to you you don't that's not how it works because that thing could literally repel your energy because if it's i could it's like pulling on a rope and i'm pulling and i'm using so much energy and i'm pulling and i'm pulling but the energy is literally just like heavier each time i pull on it it gets heavier and heavier but if i make my energy in alignment to that of the rope it's even easier to pull it because it's like, it's, it wants me and I want it to. Energetically, we're in alignment. So even when you're trying to manifest anything, it's not just how do I pull this thing to me. It's how do I become desirable to that thing for it to come to me as well. Two things have to work together. Things, you know. So when you're trying to manipulate the energy of eye contact using photos to bring back an X, yes, that's bringing that. How about you? right how about your energy because that's also important and i think when people manifest they're only doing one side of the pool pulling and it's very heavy it's exhausting as well it's so exhausting but even when you want to manifest something you have to work on that your end of the pool first because even when you're pulling something oh my god hold on guys In, i hate this time of the year Hold on, I hit this time of the year. I got an insect in my room because the windows are open. Now it's flying all over. Oh, God. What is this? Um, okay. Hold on, guys. One sec. I've got bugs coming into my room. Months. So. 
it's a bit dark now because i don't want them to be attracted to like you guys can still see me right you guys can still see me yeah so start working on your energy first important but yes you can to answer your question you actually can Someone says, how do ancestors manipulate the lives of the living? They literally are you. You literally... Ancestors... <laughs> the people that were here before you you were are literally within your own DNA. Not only do they affect you genetically, <laughs> as in the lives they lived affect you today because you're a manifestation of the lives they lived. You're the seed. So they affect you... this month yeah it's so big as well they they affect what was i saying okay let me stop getting distracted they affect you because these people birthed you and when i say birth i mean the energies you're a seed as a result it you know, they energies, the energies, the their life experiences, everything. They're literally within you. So when people say you're literally your ancestors, to, you know, um, to honor your ancestors is to literally, you know, honor your DNA because they literally are you, and everything that you experience are different triggers to how. For example, how do I explain this? The things that you experience today are triggers of specific things that happened in the past because of them, if that makes sense. So how do they manipulate the lives we're living? They literally, in every single way, in every single way. So this ancestor gave birth to this ancestor, and then this it, generations to come, generations to come, and now the, every person that's been down your bloodline, you are them. You're literally that seed that... You know, they've gone through bodies and bodies and bodies of so much living. And you are the representation of them. Your body within itself. How you look. From how you look to your fears. To your um, strength and weaknesses. All of those as a result of people that came before you. So, you are the living, um, the wa walking embodiment of those people that came before you. So, how do they have manipulated their life? In every way, genetically, you know, emotionally, you know, everywhere. You should study into, um, you should look into the study of epigenetics. Talks, you understand a lot more about the whole ancestor, ancestor thing. Someone said the bug is an evil spirit. Really? You know, <laughs> you guys know, I don't... When it comes to, like, bugs, except if it's a bug that I feel uncomfortable with. There, Let me tell you something, guys. There has been this green... I don't even know what it is. It's been in my room for, like, months. Well, months is a bit of an exaggeration. But, like, three weeks. And it walks around. And I, I've seen it, and then, like you know i'll get distracted and i'll see again after a while and then i get distracted but it's like a green it's a green little i don't even know what it is it's it's, it's not an insect it was an insect it looks like a grasshopper but much tinier and it just rotates around my room like one minute i'll see it there and then like days later i'll see it like there it has never left my room and i feel so safe around this little thing i don't know what it is i feel so safe around it so i don't feel like it's an evil spirit or it's a monitoring spirit or anything like that the month just come in just came in it's just annoying because they they flap everywhere if there's an insect or there's a something that i feel uncomfortable with then i know what to do get rid of it <laughs> right but if my energy feels safe around specific things then i'm less inclined to get rid of them Especially that little green thing. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in my room. It's tiny. It's always like up there walking. Um, yeah. Green is a good color. Green is a is a lovely color. I, I like I like green. 
someone said as if it's evil i don't believe in the concept of when you say like oh an evil spirit i don't have an energy to align with that to begin with like i don't go around fearing things like oh my god an evil spirit that's such a religious <laughs> trait it's the religious people that are more scared of like evil spirits and stuff like that i'm not scared why do, why do i need to be scared why is it even here like why would it be here evil spirits are found like things like in church that's where they cast them out and they pray them away and that thing they're always in places that are holy right funnily enough um but yeah why would there be an evil spirit in my house like i don't understand <laughs> um i don't know I, 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 those things don't come in my mind i'm always very clean and when i say clean i don't just mean like clean like and en- like i mean energy wise an evil spirit will not be here except if i called it and i needed it mm. Someone says, hi, can we be friends? Oh, yeah, 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 we can. Everybody's my friend on my life. We get to talk, you know, that's thing. But guys, I think I'm going to go now. I've been here for over an hour and a half. It's getting late. Um, Before I go, though, can you tell me some content? If you watch my channel, my page, and this is not your first time seeing me, can you tell me what you'd like to see? from me like content wise more healing content because that's my first love i love healing content that's that's what i love um more spirituality content more religious deconstruction for those people that are trying to leave more healing right healing or manifestation manifestation i feel like i the things i want to say about manifestation are going to be my class I'm creating a class right now. I'm just trying to figure out which website, which app to, to, to host it on. But I'm creating manifestation classes. I'm not going to um, give those services out for free. I'm not going to lie. There are, I already have content on manifestation. But um, as in more detail, breaking it down, creating PowerPoints. I'm putting my energy, my time. I'm definitely going to be charging for those. But manifestation content, maybe a few tips and tricks. Who knows? Um, when I'm feeling generous, but um, as in like breaking it down, explaining that you know that in depth, it's definitely gonna be paid services. Someone says more mystical content, like what though? Because sometimes, sometimes I, I I don't know, I run out of ideas. I'm thinking I don't feel like doing that today. Mystical content, like what though, guys? Like, what do you want me to talk about? Aliens, like. <laughs> What do you want me to say? I don't know what is mystical stuff. Oh, Annie says it was great spending time with you. It was great spending time. Oh, guys, you're going to make me blush. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I like coming live. I like just talking. And it's very it's very interesting. Like, there are some people that are actually listening to me. You know, sometimes I think, like, I'm just going on. I'm just going on. I'm just going on. But when people, you know, reciprocate, like the live, send me gifts comment you know having this conversation is very helpful validating as well someone says my manipulative content <laughs> manipulative content hmm i think hmm. i think maybe i should say that on my lives because i feel like when we when, when i go live that's when i'm feeling like mm, maybe we can you know and the thing about manipulative content whatever e- I know those type of. I made a. I made a video. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. It actually went to one million views, which is crazy because I didn't think it was going to blow as much as it did. So I made a video. I think two weeks back about darkness. Like, what did I say again? I even forgot. I said something about darkness. I said, embrace your darkness or something like that, because people only talk about the love and light, and people don't talk about the darkness. And that video went to a million views. I think there's even more than a million views right now i don't know but some people did not like that and the thing is i don't even think that's manipulative content i just think that's facts like that's just what it is right and i just know when i start making manipulative content <laughs> honestly manipulative it sounds, it sounds very suggestive right i just know like you know you just know some comments you're going to get when you make specific videos it's like oh, yeah 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 but you know you guys get what i'm saying 
alchemists you know what i'm saying so i'll make it for you guys but i know obviously there are different people that jump on my like see my content randomly on their for you page like oh this is so bad this is evil and i don't even think it's evil per se but you know when you're just used to the love and light and you're walking with one foot you you don't know right Mm. um yeah I, i'm getting a lot of comments about healing i, I love he i love making content about healing i love i love it i love it it has to be one of my favorite it, uh religious deconstruction videos used to be my favorite because i loved like breaking down like and then i have alchemy as well which is like breaking down um things like kind of like bible stories but more like in like meanings and how they can be applicable to everyday lives and stuff which i i like that too i haven't made some someone says talk about how to break patterns and set boundaries i have videos on that though draco you must be new, new my page someone something about anxiety i haven't made a video about anxiety but i have spoken about it on my live so maybe i will Stop server astral projection mystical oh astral projection okay i'm a muslim we believe if we are bad and don't pray god will put us in hell do you believe in hell no i don't no i don't believe in hell um i have a video on that i don't believe a good god will put people to hell in hell even before and the whole spirituality thing like when i left religion it doesn't make sense to me like when they talk about like you know hell you know burning you know gnashing teeth and um you know fire and people are gonna burn and then the heaven they talk about people be like everything will be made of gold i just think that people like to make up things you know it doesn't make sense because things like and i have a video about this actually that went viral <laughs> that video went viral where i was basically saying i stitched someone's video i think he was a christian and he was talking about how heaven is going to look like as it pertains to the bible so he was talking about the, the gates the pearly gates and you know um everything is made of gold or streets are made of gold or something like that. and i'm like what is the what value does gold have in heaven if this doesn't show that this is some sort of human interpretation or human understanding someone's imagination of paradise of course it's going to be a human being to think that heaven is going to be made of streets of gold and where everybody has a mansion and when you actually use logic guys and <laughs> when you use logic it does not make even fire the whole concept of hell and the whole how do bodies burn and people are like well your soul will burn and it's like well okay let's think about burning god being the best god being the best scientist there is there is fire in the spiritual realm what causes fire even we had to think about science you need combustion you need oxygen all of those things are there those chemical reactions to create this fire to create this chemical reaction is in hell and people's bodies are burning as they're creating more and in islam they believe in the punishment of the grave so you're in you know they punish you in the grave when your body is dying and decaying and they'll say the most we they say things like well you know they ask you who's your who's your prophet and you go say prophet muhammad obviously your heart will speak for you and if you're not you're swimming in a pool of blood all of this is man made when you look at what the concept of suffering is someone thought hell fire burning misery you know eternal separation from god even though god is omnipresent right hell god is not there and when you just use a little bit of logic it doesn't make sense that's it that i don't believe in heaven or hell not the islam version because i feel like even the islam version is even worse because that whole punishment of the grave doesn't make sense to me but that's just me that's just me christianity that's even worse as well because it's like gnashing teeth and burning and the streets are made of gold who made this <laughs> and i personally don't think my idea of heaven is places that streets are made of gold 
that's not even attractive to me i'm more of a na nature person i like trees and that kind of thing i don't care to to live in a mansion and god is sitting on a throne as though he's some sort of king do you see how all of this are human concepts when you think about a god it's this hmm, he must like sit like a king so let's have like you know let's have a throne for him and then have people on the left and the right of him and people are queuing up to go to heaven as if it's like a club you know like at, in the club before you you know give your ideas to the bouncer you're literally waiting in the queue. can you see how all of those are very much human concepts doesn't make sense to me a reincarnation makes a bit more sense to me than the whole concept of heaven and hell it's so juvenile i don't know guys it's just uh, it's just my opinion anyway but you guys believe what you believe i just can't i yeah Yeah, the whole concept of hellfire doesn't make sense. Do you know the chemical reaction to make fire? There is that, 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 that is happening. And then people are like, well, God is powerful. God can make it work. God being the most greatest scientist. Do you think things just don't make sense? Have you ever seen a fire just happen out of nowhere? Things happen because there is energy. This things are, I mean, people are like, oh, you're a science head. You believe in science. But logically <laughs> right it has to make sense even when god is creating things or you know if that co type of god exists he doesn't do things randomly things may have to make sense energy has to align to allow for specific things to happen they don't just happen fire doesn't just oh my god there's no I'm, <laughs> I'm getting very like these bugs coming in my room. I need to close my windows. I hate this time of year. I hate this time of year because now I'm having, I'm seeing a little. Because my windows are always open. I like energy to come in and out, right? But yeah, I'm just. Someone says there is a lot of similarities between reincarnation and epigenetics. Yes, there is a lot. There is a lot. yes anyway guys that was my little um people you know someone says it saddens me that all my muslim friends really believe in hell it's traumatized guys people are scared of hell and i always say this and you know i think people fear the devil more than they love god that's just my unpopular opinion I think people fear the devil more than they love God. But their ego will never allow them and they allow them to see that. People worship the devil more than they actually worship God when you think about it. You worship anything that you fear. That much level of fear, guys. Mm -mm. You guys don't even, they don't even realize it. Ah. Anyway, but that's that's besides the point. I'm going to go now. Uh, I've been here for time, but I'll come back. Today's Wednesday, Thursday. I have to make content because I've been procrastinating. I need to make content, but I'm so lazy. I'd just rather come in here and talk, but doing this doesn't um, get me paid. <laughs> I mean, I get gifts, but like I don't get those many gifts. Not that I'm guilt tripping you guys or anything, but I'm just like I, making content um, helps my finances, but I haven't been in the mood just can't be asked hey Ar hey james aaron how are you doing inessa says i'm so happy that we're all here and that so many are on the same level of energy i know i'm i'm so as i'm so happy i keep looking up because i'm i hope these insects don't come back in like i need to close these windows I mean, fears put people in bandages, not freedom. Yeah, fear is such... Fear is so powerful, isn't it? Do you know that, guys, I use fear to manifest because of how powerful it is? I use it to manifest. Because sometimes it's easier to 
connect to that fear than it is but they don't teach you that you guys need to come to my lessons because i'm i'm ready to spill the tea maybe not on live though but like um in my in my classes i sometimes when it comes to manifesting i've tried so many methods and different methods would help other people but the foundation is the same yeah someone says it's true you attract what you fear so sometimes it's really good to transmit the energy and use what you fear to actually attract it you know um yeah someone says fear is not yeah fear is actually not good not necessarily that's not good because that's not the word fear can be harmful to your dna do you guys know that fear actually destroys your dna fear destroys your dna yeah it's not good but it's necessary sometimes fear is helpful can as much as dangerous is helpful when you fear something um it helps you sometimes avoid it it can protect you your fear can protect you think about when you um you're in a certain situation you're 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 in a fight or flight you have to have fear because that fear is going to you know you know activate things like your adrenaline your quarters or levels so then you can escape that which you fear fear is good if if no one had the ability to be to you know have fear we would have issues fear is good yeah fear guys search this up and i'm not making it up and i want you guys to go online and read for yourself i'm not just talking fear destroys your dna people that are always in high levels of stress anxiety you are destroying your dna obviously not that they're doing it intentionally but you're actually destroying your dna one of the ways um causes cancer as well especially if you're always in a high state of heightened state of cortisol levels and anxiety and those things you're more likely to um develop some illnesses uh, you know that kind of thing you know such it up don't take my word for it i ain't no scientist but have a look someone says i'm so scared to be a millionaire <laughs> you know so you cannot be serious <laughs> i swear it's so <laughs> oh my god that is so funny i'm so scared to be a millionaire ah <laughs> no honestly um but obviously i don't <laughs> i don't think that's how it works but yeah yeah well, you know when i when i make my my uh class i want to talk about the fear someone says they fear death and it's crippling let me tell you something i've talked about the fear of death many times as someone who used to have it to a point where now i find it liberating i'm like oh, guys it's good because imagine living forever that's even more scary like oh being here forever mm -mm. Mm -mm. anyway when it comes to um fear of death understand that you're dying each time and i know that sounds like girl like what do you mean you're dying each time i've, I've made videos on this already um you're always dying you just don't realize it every time you add a plus one on your birthday aspects of yourself die like you die think about your five-year-old self that version of you listen that's died to create a version to create to create leeway for your six-year-old self and now however old you are you had to kill aspects of yourself and when you're growing you don't realize you're growing it's like oh i'm taller now oh look i have a beard now you don't realize it you just mm, i just it's like a transition right like every day you're literally growing older older you're you're shifting you're 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 growing you're going into a different phase new level whatever the case is and that requires death and rebirth of course because once when you at each end of the cycle is always a new beginning every time one person dies there was always someone being born that's just how the case is so every time you add a plus one to your birthday you start to lose you start to you're dying in fact from the minute you're born you're dying until you die <laughs> if that makes sense it's a transition i don't think it's something to be scared of it's understanding that you're being transitioning anyway as and death is just another form of transition the same way you turn 
18, 21, your death is a, just a different number, if you like to think about it that way. I, I like to think about it that way. It's like a different number. So however, whenever you die, that's another that's another level, that's a little transition. It's nothing to be scared of. It's, na it's natural, it's nature. When you were being born, were you scared? It's like, oh, I don't remember that time. But energy is always in place. When you were being born, you're entering, you're literally new energy coming in. It's always been there, but it's coming in into a new shape, into a new vessel. And it will leave the vessel and go back to where it was. It's nothing to be scared of. It's just natural. You should be more scared of like <laughs> how you're going to die. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but <laughs> maybe how you die. Because sometimes when you die. And I always believe that even when different ways on how you die. Um, the most scariest ways to die. Like, for example, if you're being burnt. Maybe I'm, is it too dark to talk about this right now? Is it too dark for me to be discussing this? Um, de depending on how you die or like peop this pe you know, things people are scared, different ways people are scared to die. The pain, you would, you know, transition. You will go to the other side and then the pain won't be there anymore. For example, if you're being burnt alive, yeah, of course, you're going to feel the pain. But there was a point where, you know, when you're being burnt, did you know that you die of suffocation more than you die of like anything else? So you, when you're being burnt alive, I don't know why I'm, that's a specific example, but when you're being burnt for whatever reason, um, you die because of suffocation, because you can't breathe, you know, the fire and everything affects your breathing. And then before you even go through that much pain that you, you, you think is, you're going to be going through, you've crossed over. So the pain is no longer there. That's how I like to think about it at least, you know? Yeah, this is too dark to talk about this time, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit too dark to, 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 um, to talk about this. Yeah, I believe there is beauty to death, in death. And people that have died, I think, you know, except if you believe in heaven or hell, and like, oh my God, are they in hell? Are they in heaven? I believe that they are good. They're, they they even, In fact, they're even better off. You know, it's, it's freeing. It's like, you know what I think about it? It's like your energy is in this vessel. When you die, it's like taking a bird out of a cage. It's freeing. It's liberating. You're literally... Rem it's almost like a, a butterfly coming out of that cocoon, metamorphosis, whatever stage. So you know how it just kind of like leaves this body and just flies away? That's what I think. Well, that's my idea of what I think death is, you know? Um... I'm talking about death, guys. Do you know yesterday I was lucid dreaming? And in my dream, guys, people say when you're lucid dreaming, don't ask people what time it is. I do that all the time, light work. But you know what I was finding very difficult in my lucid dream, literally last night, last night, this was, this, last night, this night, this night, to this night, looking in the mirror. Oh my God. I've never, and the thing is, when I'm lucid dreaming, I'm wild with my lucid dreams. Um, I do whatever I want because you know it's a dream. You know it's not real, right? I can do whatever. But looking in the mirror when you're lucid dreaming is so scary. So obviously, <laughs> I don't know the dream. I was dreaming that I was in my house, and I knew um I was lucid dreaming. So I was in my kitchen. I was like, oh, I'm in a dream, and it's funny because when you're lucid, at least for me. When you're lucid dreaming, you're always, you're aware that you're dreaming and you, you, it's like the real you is being stuck somewhere. So it's like, I know I'm sleeping. So I'm like, okay, cool. And in my kitchen, obviously there was a door that leads to the garden. And obviously when you're looking through a glass door, you see a reflection of yourself. So obviously my dream, in my lucid dream, I was looking to get out into my garden. And then I saw my reflection and guys... I was like, okay, hold on. What is going on? It's like I was looking through a portal. Call me dramatic, but that was... And I'm not scared to ask people the time. I've asked people what time it is. They've told me. Last time I asked someone the time, they said it was 2016. I'm like, that's crazy because we actually... Obviously, I wasn't... I was thinking to myself in the dream. Oh, 2016. Um, it's always backwards every time I have a lucid dream. I'm, it's never like in the future, at least my own personal experiences. It's never like ahead. It's always somewhere... And it's always around August as well, which is funny, which is funny. What happened in, what's, what about August? I need, I need to dive deep into that, but 
besides the point i'm looking in the mirror now or that reflection back and i can't recognize like i know it's me but it's like aspects of myself are like and i know i'm dreaming and i'm like and i'm not gonna lie for the first time i got scared and i'm like i need to wake up now like get up because it's like what well, if you get st- and i started to overthink him up like what if i get stuck here or if i'm stuck in this week i have to get up so and i don't know about you guys if you guys lucid dream or anything of that nature but i can wake myself up it's easy for me to wake myself up and i do this even when i'm having like a nightmare i always know how to wake myself up there is something i do it's i can't explain it because it's it's weird right but there is some movement i do in my dreams and it allows me to wake up easily so now i'm trying to wake up um and it's like why am i finding it a bit difficult now like you know i was bugging but i obviously finally woke up and i was like that for the first time obviously i'm not scared of lucid dreaming i'm scared of nothing i don't fear no but that mirror looking at yourself in the mirror if you've done it before let me know how that experience was for you but i know for me i was that was different that was different Someone says, I stopped dreaming seven years ago. How does that work? I literally have like eight dreams each day. Like, I have like multiple dreams each day. Someone says, I want to experience death soon. But my daughter is 10 and I just adopted a child. So I have to leave girl bridget girl that's that's hard <laughs> sister that's dark i hope you're you're okay though i hope it's nothing like girl now you have me thinking hmm, hmm. <laughs> it's not funny um try are you okay like i mean like emotionally and everything because i know sometimes when people i, I know there is this um influx of glorified you know side suicide lately and it's kind of like whilst yes you shouldn't be scared of death but also you shouldn't be looking forward no I don't know. Yes, I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm sorry about that. I hope you have a great support system, whether it's friends, family, partner, someone. I hope you have that. And I hope you realize that no matter what i'm gonna go but this i want this to be the last thing i talk about because i've been wanting to go for a while but i hope that you realize that whatever you're going through in life because life can suck i'm not gonna lie to you it's understanding that no matter the case obviously i'm trying to be general because i don't know the specific circumstances is you're okay like you're going to be fine even when you're not fine you're going to be fine you're going to be fine you could feel like you know you're going through you know upheaval you're going through very challenging times and you're like oh, how am i gonna but i want you to understand that you're 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 going to be fine and i know that sounds like girl how do you know like everyone says i'm gonna be fine blah, blah, blah. but i understand that you've gone through many things in the past that you've overcome and if you could overcome that you can overcome the situation of course not knowing what the situation is and if you could please message me on instagram i'd love to help you out in the best way i can so then i can tell my advice to you because i'm trying to be so general general i i think i'm not even being helpful but if you could hit uh bridget if you could reach out to me on instagram if you if you want to and um when i get time i'll read through the message and see how i can help all right guys i'm, I'm, I'm i have to go um someone says no so my female friend has a crush on you 
she's not sure if you like females what <laughs> uh hmm that's weird well i'm straight but i you know i'm flattered um Someone says, where does all our energy go when we die? It can stay here. It can go into a different dimension in a nutshell. All right, guys. I've got to go now. But um, good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Bye, Aaron. Uh, James, Aaron. Um, take care, guys. Sleep well. And thank you so much for being on the live. I appreciate you guys. Uh, good night, Bridget. Um, bye, John. Bye, Inessa. Thank you for being here and contributing. Thank you, Anu. I appreciate you. Thank you, Sosara Martin. Thank you, Toto Nali. Toto Nali. Thank you, Tendo, Tina, Sasha, Asibil. Guys, if I pronounce, mispronounce your names, be, take it easy on me. I'm trying. Okay. Dosani, thank you. Thank you so much, Madina. You have the same name as my sister. Um, thank you, Michael. Miko? Michael? Miko? Okay, bye guys. I just want to say bye uh mention you guys by name, but thank you so much. And this live is going to be on YouTube. On Friday. La Tracy, thank you so much. Love you too mention my name please thank you joy aku 79 i am cash wealth yes you are girl <laughs> good night <laughs> um manifest it fred thank you hadasha adasha thank you star esther um thank you guys thank you for being here um all right